Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. What up, though? What up? Speak to me as you come in. Speak to me as you come in. What up, though? What's happening, everybody? Happy Saturday. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. If you know how to share me, can you share me? If you know how to share me, can you share me? What up, though, everybody? What up? Speak to me as you come in. Speak to me as you come in. What up? What up? What up? If you know how to share me, can you share me? To my Periscope church, what up? To my Facebook church, what up? And to my new church, Instagram, what up, though? All right? So I'm excited about the series that we are teaching. Uh, Pastor Jamon Glenn and I have been teaching a series entitled Looking for Love. It's not just relationship. It's deeper than that. We're not just trying to get you hooked up. It is deeper than that. And tomorrow we're doing um, a sermon entitled Open for it. You're open for love. Um, and that will be tomorrow, 9 30, 11, sorry, 7 30, 9 30, 11 30, and 1 30. Um, Pastor Jamon is back, so I will not be doing all four service. Glory to God, but it was okay. Um, all right, so let's go. All right, I want you guys to really think about what I'm going to say to you on tonight because I do believe that a lot of believers um, have walls up. And when we talk about um, being open for love again, to be open for love means that you're willing to trust again. Willing to means that you're willing to drop your guard again. I'm amazed at people who um, got hurt in friendships, so you won't allow anyone else to be your friend. I'm amazed at those um, that um, got disappointed in church, so now you won't allow anyone else to be your pastor. I'm even amazed at those that had a tough, a tough time, say that you were in a relationship or that you were previously married and now you're not there. You never thought that you would be single again. But nevertheless, this is your reality. Um, you are single again. And the question is, are you open? One of the things that I find amazing is that if you read the scripture, if you look at Samson, Samson had previously been married. Due to his first marriage and how it went, the Bible lets us know how they pressured her for the riddle, how they uh, she came, he came back to get her. She was already passed on to somebody else. Come on here. And ended up being killed. He never married again. Watch me. He fell in love, but he never married again. If you search the scripture, the Bible will say something. What is that? that Samson loved Delilah, but you will never read where Delilah loved Samson. All right, so the question is, are you open for love again? Let's just ask a couple of questions if you don't mind, and maybe you could put it on the screen and answer this for me. Why do you think that people close themselves off from friendships, from relationships, um, from courtship or anything? Why do you think that they close that door, lock it, and throw away the key? Why do you think that people have shut people out when it comes to love again? Let's get some answers here. Pain, okay, deep hurt. This is good. Rejection, um, distrust, hurt. Um, I'm reading some of the answers here. Disappointment, okay, there we go. Fearful that it will end like in times past. Dang, past offenses. This is good. So when you say past offenses, let's be honest. You hold people guilty uh, for what someone else did for you. Um, mistrust, all right? So why do people close the door and not allow anyone else in due to lies and shame and fear and abuse, um, deep wounds, all right, if we study the scripture, all right, let's go Bible. You ready? Let's always go Bible. One of the things I, try, I do my best to tell people is find yourself in scripture. Find your situation in scripture. If you find you in the word of God, then you can also find your way of escape. All right, all right. 
So let's go. If we study the scripture, the Bible lets us know there was a man by the name of Elimelech in the book of Ruth. A, um, a famine came in the land. He picked up his wife and he picked up his two sons and he moved to Moab. When he moved to Moab, he has his wife, he has his two sons, and then the Bible says he ends up dying. So now he has a wife and two sons who are there. Then the Bible says that his two sons end up getting married. Who do they marry? They marry two Moabite women. What are their names? Orpah and Ruth. So now we have two Israelite boys who have married two Moabite women. And then there's the widow, which is Naomi. The Bible lets us know that eventually, please listen, that the two boys die. So now we have three women and they are all widows. Can I give you three things that should have shut the one that we're going to talk about tonight that should have shut um, Ruth down. Number one, in Ruth 1 verses 4 and 5, let's talk. She married an Israelite. She married, what does that mean? She married someone that was not of her background. She married someone that was not raised the way that she was raised. We always say that opposites attract. How many of you all can agree that you have dated or you have married or you have you had fallen in love with someone who was totally your opposite? Who was totally your opposite? And they always say that opposites attract. How many of you all can admit that you married someone that was not like you. If you know that I am talking to you, can you give me that emoji either with your hand up or just say yes. If you dated someone and you ended up falling in love with them, but you knew that you are, oh, this is good. Watch me. We're unequally yoked. Can we just go real? Can we have some real honest conversation here? All right. So this is something that should have shut her down, that she has married into a world, that she has fallen in love with somebody that is not her background. The Bible is right. How can two walk together except they agree? She is a Moabite and he is a Israelite. The second thing that should have shut her down was death. Let's talk for a minute. What do you mean? Her husband died. Can I tell you something? For those of you all that have ever been divorced, what they tell me is that divorce is like a death. That divorce is like a death. Why is it like a death? Because when you get married, the Bible says the two become one. So imagine a piece of you not being there. Divorce is like a death. And watch me, in the natural realm, in the spirit realm, I have seen death shut people down. Let's be, let's talk. Let's have a real talk, right? right? Let's listen. Um, when someone dies, it leaves a spirit of grief. You got to be careful that you don't allow death to kill you. Can I say that again? You have to be careful that you don't allow death to kill you. Come on here. If you know I'm talking good, can you do me a favor? Can you go ahead and share me? All right. So number one, we understand that um, he marries someone that is not of his, that she marries someone that is not of her background. Number two, a death has occurred. I need y'all to hear me. When you grieve so long, you don't take care of yourself. You're, you're emotionally all over the place. Mentally, you are gone. You got to be careful that you don't allow death to kill you. All right. The third thing that should have shut her down was the fact that um, she was not productive. What do you mean? She had no children. Come on, let's go. When you feel as if you are not productive, it will shut you 
down. When you begin to feel that nothing is that you have you have nothing to live for. Um, she had no sons. She married this man. He was not her equal. She he dies, and then you leave me empty-handed. She does not have anything to let her to um to hold on to when this man is gone. What does that mean? She there's a part of her that feels as as if she is not productive. There are many of you that are listening to me right. Now, there is a part of you that feels as if you are not productive. Come on, y'all. Let's go Bible. And we understand that when you begin to feel that way, you begin to feel barren. You, you don't have anything to hold on to. Nothing's being birthed in you. Nothing's coming through you. Nothing's um coming out of you. There is nothing like feeling as if you are stuck and you don't see anything coming in the near future. Come on here. And I am amazed. Can I just stop and give God a praise that some of you all, in spite of what you have been through, you are still here. Come on here. You might not be in a good space, but let me give God some praise that you still get up every morning, that you didn't allow the enemy to make you do something stupid, to harm yourself or to walk away or to give up on God. Can we just stop and give God a praise that you, my brothers and my sisters, are still in the land of the living. Oh my God. Can, if you know that it is nothing but a miracle that you are still in the land of the living in a new decade, can you just type the words, I'm still here. Testimony service is now open. Come on here. If you're going to sing, don't testify. If you're going to testify, don't sing. So open your mouth. I need you to just type the words, I'm still here. In spite of the fact that I was in something that was uh, imbalanced, despite the fact that I've experienced what feels like a death, in spite of the fact that I feel as if I have not been productive, let me go on record by giving God some glory that I am still here. Come on here, y'all. Let's 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 let the devil know that he didn't win. Let's just speak that real quick. I am still here. Oh, the devil didn't want you to type that. He did not want you to speak that. He did not want you to be here to hear this devotion. But let's go on record. Those of you all, can you just open your mouth? And just say it out loud. Let's put that in the atmosphere. I am still here. Come on here. I'm still here. Yes, I was in balance. Yes, I went into something that was not that was caused me to be unequally yoked. Yes, I feel as if I've experienced a death. I've been in a season of grieving. Yes, um, I have felt not productive. But hold. Oh, Let's go on record that I am still here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm still here. I really want to thank God that you did not take your life. For someone that is on here, the enemy told you to take your life. And I honor God. Oh, the Holy Ghost is talking that even some of you all, you tried it, but God stopped death in his track. I'm still here. I'm still here. If you don't mind, can you do me a favor? Can you inhale and exhale? <sighs> Come on here. Inhale and exhale. <sighs> what does that mean? As long as there is breath in my body, that means that God has time to give me a miracle. <sighs> Come on here. As long 
as there is breath in your body, that means that God still has time to give you a miracle. Oh, my God, I'm still here. I'm still breathing. Well, I might be hurting. I might be in pain. I might feel hopeless. But to God be the glory. He has me on here because he has a word for me. You're not here by chance or by accident. This is a divine hookup. Oh, I feel the anointing. This is a divine hookup. Hey, I'm still here. All right? So let's talk. Now that you are here, I need to talk to you. So what needs to be done for me to move on? What needs to be done to make sure that I am right with God? Um, how do I make sure that what should have shut me down doesn't shut me down because I don't want to be here just um, being here. I want to live. I, I want to, those of you that want to live, um, can I, I need, I need you to be okay with that. I need you to be okay saying, you know what, God, if I'm going to be here, I just don't want to be here. I want to live. I want to be happy. Come on here. I want to be in your will. I want what you have for me. In spite of my hurt, in spite of my pain, in spite of some of my mistakes, in spite of my grief, in, in spite of me not being productive, I want want to live. And I need everybody to hear me. He says, I come that you may have life. Ah, come on here. And not just have it, but have it more abundantly. I need you to hear me, guys. I mean, he died for you to have life. Come on here. I am here tonight so that you can begin to align yourself so that you can love again. Let me tell you something. I'm not just talking about relationships. I'm talking about love. Watch me. It is not God's will that we be alone. It is not God's will that we be isolated. It is not God's will that we be on an island by ourselves, regardless of what has happened around you. What did I tell you in the early, in the latter part of last year, in the early part of this year? What you do, in this next 10, can and will set you up for the rest of your life. So allow me, if you don't mind, to give you four things that I need you to begin to pray about so that you can do what? So that you can love again. I need you, I'm not, please get my understanding. I am not just talking about a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. I'm not just talking about relationship. I'm talking about village, community. Friendships, um, covenant, spiritual relationships, all right? Allow me to give you four things um, so that you can be open. Number one, you ready? Number one, you're going to have to trust someone. And I need you all to... You're going to have to trust someone. We are in a day right now that the trust of man is low. You are going to have to trust someone. Everybody is not out to get you. 
Everybody doesn't want to see you dead. God will put the right people in your life that want to see you reach your best potential, that want to see you happy, that want to see you live. You are going to have to trust someone. For those of you that have trust issues, it's okay. Just give me the emoji or just put the word me. You're going to have to trust someone. What do you mean? The Bible says in, in um, Ruth 3 and 5, when Naomi began to give Ruth some instructions, this is a woman of her same sex. You ready? You're going to have to trust someone. The Bible says, I will do whatever you say. For every female, you're going to have to trust another female. For every male, you're going to have to trust another male. You're going to have to trust someone. Not only are you going to have to trust someone of, of your same sex, you're going to have to trust someone of your opposite sex. I'll never trust another man another day in my life. The Bible says, please listen, in Ruth 3 and 4, when, when um, Naomi was giving her instructions, the Bible says, when he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go uncover his feet and lie down. Here's the line that messed me up. He will tell you what to do. He will tell you what to do. You're going to have to trust a person that is not of your sex. She trusted a female. Now she has to trust a male. She trusted a female, and now you're going to have to trust a male. You are going to have to trust someone. For those of you that have trust issues, at least let me pray that God will um, deliver you from the spirit of paranoia, <clears throat> but give you the spirit of discernment. Everybody's not out to hurt you. Everybody's not out to hurt you. You are going, I'll just say it again, to have to trust someone in order for you to be open for love. Friendships again. I pray that you don't make the same mistakes. So I'm going to ask God to deliver you from the spirit of paranoia, but at the same time, sharpen your discernment. Because you don't want to be a repeat offender. Number two. You ready? In order for you to be open again, you're going to have to get around people. Come on, let's talk. Let's talk. You're going to have to come out of your house. You're going to have to have more than just going to your office or going to your cubicle and shutting people out, going in, having church, and running out of the building. You are going to have to come out of your house. It would blow your mind how many people are living but not outside. Not out. No connection. No village. No community because you don't want to hurt again. Why do you say, you ready for this? In Ruth 2 and 3, she asked Naomi, I need to get out of this house. Let me, go, let me go in the field and work. The Bible says in Ruth 2 and 3, so she went out. 
and began to glean in the field behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she found herself working in the field that belonged to Boaz. But she never would have been in that field had she stayed in the house. I want to push some of y'all out of the house. You're going to have to get around people. Listen to me. Everybody is not evil. It's a lot out in there. But everybody is not evil. You have to begin to get around. She was locked up in that house with Naomi. And she, she asked her, I need to go in the field. I mean, I love you and everything, but I need to get out. And for some of you all, I need you to begin to prepare yourself to have an amazing spring, summer, and fall. I need you out. One of the things that I find amazing is that, especially you church people, you don't know how to live. You don't. When I say get out the house, I mean even get out the church. I mean get out. Some of y'all, you don't know how to live. Because you, anxiety makes it difficult. And I believe that. I believe that there are two demonic forces that have been released in the land that keep people locked up. Anxiety is one. And shyness. Being shy. You got to hear me. Take baby steps. I believe it. I know that anxiety is tough. I know it is. And I don't want to come across as being um, insensitive. But baby steps with it. Because the enemy will use that to keep you locked in the house. I need you to get out. Right, you get, watch me. Some of y'all, you are good only at going to work and going to church. Going to church. I need you to hear me. You are going to get. You are going to eventually become angry. The older you get, if all if all you have is work and church, you are going to get angry. This is why there are so many mean people in the house of God. You must, the Bible says, "Be careful lest ye bite and devour one another." Can I tell you why some of them are so angry? Because they have not lived. And the worst thing that they could do is be around people who look like they live in. I don't know how to do this. Where should I start? Could I, okay, now, guys, I believe in church. I believe you can go to church. But there are too many social clubs that you can be a part of. There are clubs that you can go to that go to movies. There are clubs that you can go to that travel. There are clubs that you can go to that go skiing. There are clubs that there's so many. There's so there's so much out there that that you don't know about because you've only been in the house with your Naomi. You've only been in the house with your. There are social clubs. There are stepping clubs. There are, one of the things that blesses me is when I go to my spin class. Um, I watch Aaron and his wife Anaya who open a business called The Will. They have these. I tell them all the time, you guys have created um, an amazing village, a village of people. They are people that they met working out. Now they travel. They are now planning to go to Jamaica. What is that? That is a village that's getting around people. Somebody just, someone just came to think, I'm just going to take a class. I'm just going to work out. But now, because you've been around people, you're meeting people, you're being introduced to people, and people getting to know you, you're getting, you're getting to know them. Now we're traveling. What does that mean? You are out. You have to get around people. All right? Number three. This is tough. Hate to say it, but you're going to have to be vulnerable. It is, Monique. This is deep. I need you to hear me. You're going to have to feel vulnerable sometimes. Like, don't talk, your st don't talk yourself out of doing certain things. Sometimes, no, bye-bye. 
You're going to have to be vulnerable. Don't talk yourself out of doing certain things. What do you mean? What, because she's out? She's noticed by Boaz. Boaz asked the man who was watching over his field, who is that girl out there? He said, that's Naomi. I'm sorry, that's Ruth. Watch me, the Moabite. The girl that came back here with Naomi. He told the servant, hook her up, take care of her. Then he called her and she put, watch how vulnerable she is. In Ruth 2 and 3, after he began to tell her, listen, work the field. Don't go over there by the men. I'm going to talk to the men. Tell them not to mess with you. Stay with the women that are working the field. He just began to, the Bible says, at this, vulnerable, she bowed down with her face to the ground. Watch me. Do you not know that? Watch me. Do you not know? <laughs> I love you, princess, but I can't. Come on, stop saying that. Monitor your confessions. Listen, do you not know that people were watching her? Do you not know that they were like, this, this, you know, this, 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 this Ruth, this, that Moabite. Now, look, girl, she over there bound on the floor. She put herself out there. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She exclaimed, why have I found such favor? In your eyes, that you notice me. Watch me, a foreigner. A foreigner. Guys, I need you to hear me. I know what it is. I'm not talking about relationships, I'm not talking about no dating either. I know what it is to be vulnerable. I know what it is to put myself out there. And to acknowledge. Bishop Roy Marshall, hey. Um, I know what it is to be vulnerable. I know what it is to put myself out there. You guys have heard me tell the story before. How the Lord led me to go serve under Choco. And we, him and I were doing a dual sermon one time. And the Lord says, we were preaching on Moses. The Lord said, Take, we had a staff as an illustration. And listen to this. And we'll say, take the staff, place it at his feet, and I need you to lay your ministry, your gift, and your calling in front of this whole church. I need you to place it at his feet. I need you to get down on your knees and submit yourself. Huh? That's vulnerable. That's vulnerable. That's vulnerable. Do you hear me? And some of y'all, how, how can I put it? That vulnerability is going to be your elevation. C can I tell you what stops many of us from being vulnerable? Thinking or worrying about what others are going to think or say. So you allow others to stop you from what you feel. From what you feel. Because to be open for love again means that you will have to be vulnerable again. You have to trust again. You have to believe again. You're going to have to know that you are worthy of the faith. <laughs> God, I love the Bible. That it, guys, can I, let me say this to you. I need you all to hear me. I never want you all to think that I am not sensitive. What I tell you to do, or sometimes what God would tell you to do, it's not easy. It is not easy. I don't hear me clearly. Everything that God tells you to do is not going to be easy. It's going to seem stupid. It's going to sound stupid. But he takes the 
foolish things to confound the wise. If, if, you, if you struggle with it, at least let this be a part of your prayer. Can you just, somebody just help me, Jesus. Can you just type, help me, Lord. At least put that out there. Help me, Lord. Don't just say, well, I ain't doing it. Just say, help me, Lord. Just say, help me, Lord. But don't talk yourself out of your open season. This Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Help me, Lord. I know that, guys, this is what the word comes to do. It comes to challenge us. It comes to push us. It comes to break us. It comes to make us. Help me, Lord. Let me tell you something. When I left Pastor Campbell, one of the things that I said to myself, nobody will ever have that kind of rule or control over me. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Y'all want honesty, right? It ain't gonna happen. Nobody will ever. And when the Lord told me, humble yourself, lay it all down again. Ah! I was going crazy. I was going crazy. Guys, I know how you feeling. I know the feeling. But your blessing is in your obedience. Not to man, to God. Not to man, to God. So how do you become open again? Number one, you trust, you gotta have to trust someone. Number two, you got to get around people, you got to get out. Number three, you got to become vulnerable. Number four, come on. Yeah, my shot. I'm done after this. Y'all ready? Now this is what messed me up. Know that you come with baggage. There's some things you taking a risk dealing with me now. I come with some listen. Somebody <laughs> say get out. You come with baggage. Everybody can't handle you. Let's let's go. You come with baggage. Everybody can't handle you. If you gonna deal with me, you better make sure you strong enough. You Do you come on here? Everybody can't handle you. Everybody, listen, and when you find out what it's going to take, if you can't handle it, walk away. So we all know that the Bible lets us know that Boaz wanted Ruth, but he, according to the law, was next, was not. Next in line to get Ruth. There was another relative that was designed to be according to the chart and according to the paperwork and according to the law that was supposed to be the kinsman redeemer. Boaz goes to that person. Y'all better hear me. When you come with baggage, you need an intercessor. You need somebody that can speak on your behalf. You need somebody who can defend you. I'm out here now. You need somebody that know your worth. Do you hear me talking to you all? You better come on here. Don't when you when you get with me, listen, it's some bags around here. <laughs> it's some bags around here. It's some luggage. You ready? This blessed me. Can we read this out of the message Bible? So Boaz goes to the man who's supposed to be the kinsman redeemer. You got to listen to this. 
Everybody, do me a favor. Please listen to this. Let's read it out of the Message Bible. It's in Ruth 4, verses um, 3 through 6. You ready? Listen to this. Boaz said to his relative, the piece of property that belonged to our relative Elimelech is being sold by his widow, Naomi, who has just returned from the country of Moab. I thought you ought to know about it. Buy it back if you want it. You can make it official in the presence of those sitting here and before the town elders. Let's make sure we do it right legally. You have first redeemer rights. If you don't want it, tell me so. So I'll know where I stand. You're first in line now to do this, and I'm next after you. Doggone it. The first one might not have what you need. Come on here. We out here now. We in this Bible now. Don't lock in on the first one that's a, that you think is supposed to have you. He said, this is the first one. I'll buy it. Run that. <laughs> I want the land. Run that. Let me get that up off of Naomi. I'll buy it. Then Boaz added, let's go Bible. You realize, don't you, that when you buy the field from Naomi, you also get Ruth, the Moabite, the widow, the one who has had to deal with death, the one who married somebody that was not her equal, and the one that has been feeling as if she is not productive because she has not birthed any kids. The widow of our dead relative, along with the Deemer's responsibility. To have children with her to carry on the family inheritance. Can we go Bible? <laughs> Here's my line, verse 6. Then the relative said, oh, I can't do that. I'll jeopardize my own family inheritance. Stop. See, when... The next one will, will be willing to put everything they have on the table because they know your worth. Oh, I can't do that. I'll jeopardize my own family inheritance. Listen to this. You go ahead and buy it. You can have my rights. I can't do it. <laughs> Get his Bible. He said, I can't do it. I need some of y'all to send somebody a thank you letter that they didn't do it. Ah, can I thank you that you didn't want to be my friend? Can I thank you that you didn't want to be bothered with me? Can I thank you that you didn't want to put up with my past, neither my present, because you had, you really were not a part of my future. Because I come with some stuff. And the next one that get me has to be able to deal or be strong enough to cover me. Saints of the Most High God. Yeah, my shy, my son. <laughs> I'm going to give y'all this little. I'm done. Listen to me. Listen to me. One of the best scriptures is in Ruth 3 and 9. When Boaz is asleep and he wakes up and Ruth is literally um, sleeping at his feet. And he woke up and said, who are you? 
She says, I am your servant, Ruth. Listen to this. Spread the corner of your garment over me. Cover me. Everybody hear me, and I need you to hear me. God is going to send the right person that can cover you. One of the things that we know that when people talk about, you know, Ruth and Boaz, women rejoice because he was wealthy. It was bigger than money. He had what it took to cover her. If you hear me and you hear me clearly, you will not be left in the cold. But it's going to take some things on your behalf. I need you to hear me. I hear the Lord. I hear some of y'all like, Lord, bid me to come out. You know what he just said? Come out. Step out of your comfort zone. Step out the boat. Step away from everybody. Do what you thought that you could never do. Everybody hear me. This is not, I need you to hear me. This is not just no marriage stuff. Because guess what? I have to cover people as a friend. You need the right friends who can cover you. I have friends. I am there as a covering, as your friend. I am there as a covering, as your confidant. I'm the one that you could talk to when you can't talk to no, I can cover you. I'm the one that you can gut yourself to. And I have people that I can gut myself to. Guess what? Why? Because they can cover me. They can handle me and my stuff. You better hear me talking to you. And some of you all, you need the right covering. You need a kinsman redeemer that have what it take to pull you out of whatever you were in. I love you all. And I need y'all to hear me. It is not his will that we be locked up, locked in, and miserable. Hear me clearly, I'm not just talking about courtship. I'm not just talking about marriage. You need covering with your friends. You need covering of a shepherd. Some of y'all are out here doing stuff without the covering of your shepherd. But you got to get the right one who's not intimidated with the call that is on your life. And because they correct you, don't mean that they intimidate it. They, their covering also protects you. You got to hear me. You got to hear me. Cover. Please go back. Listen to this. I know being vulnerable is the hardest thing. Trusting is the hardest thing for some of you all. But these are the, the bars and the gates that the enemy put up to keep you isolated. The hardest thing in the world, I need you to hear me, is to feel as if you're starting over again. Listen to me. It might feel like you're starting over again but you're not the same person. I said something here. You're not the same person. You're not. Everything that you've gone through has taught you some amazing lessons. Everything from the death to the grievances to the unequally yoked, come on here, Everything that you've gone through has prepared you to feeling that you're not productive. All of that 
prepared you for now. Because the Bible says that all things are going to work together for your good. I want, can, I'm going to give you this and we're going to we, just listen to this and I'll let you go. So the Bible says that Boaz marries Ruth. And now she becomes pregnant. What you needed to birth couldn't be birthed with your first. That's why God had to take him. Did you hear what I just said? That's why God had to take him so that you could get to your Boaz. And now you conceive what you could have never conceived with your first. And they name him Obed. Obed is the father of Jesse. Jesse is the father of David. So Obed, do you hear me talking to you? Is the grandfather of the greatest king that Israel ever had. What left, what died, what was unequal, what didn't produce, couldn't give you what God has for you. Do you hear me talking to you? Listen to this. Theologians say that David was the grandson of Obed and Ruth. But Orpah, the one that did not go with Naomi, was in the lineage of Goliath. Shut up. Yes. So Ruth is in the lineage of David. While Orpah, the one that didn't go with her, is in the lineage of Goliath. Is that the craziest thing? And I need some of y'all to know. There was a reason for the death. There was a reason for the imbalance. There was a reason that you didn't produce. But it wasn't for always. Because now, in this 10, it's going to be your year. But I'm going to need you to get out. Ah! I love the Bible. I'm going to need some of y'all to listen to this over again. I'm going to need you to dive into this. I'm going to need you to go deep into this. I need you to listen to it again. And I need you to confess some things. For those of y'all that struggle with anxiety, for those of y'all that uh, struggle with um, shyness, for those of y'all that struggle with grief, for those of y'all that struggle with anger, for those of y'all that feel like, oh my God, they didn't want me. That's because they couldn't cover you. You got the message. They could not. They didn't have what it took to cover you. They didn't. I want to thank you for your rejection. Because I... I've been through too much to be played with. Y'all better hear me talking to y'all. Wow! Listen. Tomorrow we're going to be doing all four of our service. Pastor Jamon and I will be, both be preaching. But I want at least a hundred of you tonight um, to sow a seed into the word um, that you received on tonight. I always try to get you um, to attach a word to your seed. There are at least a hundred of you. I want you to either sow 10 or 20. Some of you all can sow more. That is on you. But it's either a $10 seed or a $20 seed. Um, 
if you saw it on Cash App, it is the money sign. Uh, it's to it, right? And then it's Holy John. Can you put a capital on the H and a capital on the J? And then there's a two at the end. Or if you don't know, if you want to do my regular Holy John, that is fine. I have to get two. Um, a money sign and Holy John, all lowercase. Or um, you heard 20, then you sell it. Or it's the money sign and it's Holy John, capital H, capital J, and then two, the number two. Um, my push pay is just Holy John. My push pay is just Holy John. But there are a hundred of you I want you to sew tonight. It's either 10, it's either 20. If you feel led to sew more, it is on you. Um, I want you to sew, and the word that I want you to attach to your seed is open. Period. Open. What does that mean? I am open for love. I am open for what God has for me. I am open. Do I accept PayPal? Under Holy John, H-O-L-Y-J-O-H-N. I do it. It's PayPal. Um, at least a hundred of you all. For those that are listening to it for the first time, if you feel led to so. Um, you can sow. But everyone, sow something tonight. If this word blessed you, um, I dive into this word. I make sure that I give you what I know God wants you to have. Um, open. I am open. Um, somebody just sowed a seed and just said, covering. Wow, that's a powerful word to release. Whatever open, covering, whatever word that you're sowing into, you sow it tonight, all right? I love you guys. Pray for me. If you don't have a church to go to, come out of your house. Meet us. We have four locations. Go to newlifesoutheast.org and find out. I am on 78th and Dobson, but get out that house. I got to get you around people. Mm -mm. You're not going to You're not gonna just live. You about to get out of here. It's going to be no, you coming out. All right. I love you guys. Keep me in your prayers. Love you. Got to go. All right. Facebook, share this word on your page. Share it. Love you guys.